I also wanted to know that if, if at some point you need to step away into a supportive environment to breathe, ground yourself, or talk through how you're feeling, Kate, our wellness facilitator will be available in a Zoom room. Um, so I can also drop the chat for that as well. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Katie and Mr. Spoon. Hey, everyone. Um, I just wanna make my intro, uh, spend just 60 seconds or less introducing Spoon Jackson. Um, I was trying to think this morning, Spoon, and he's on speakerphone, um, how long I've known him. And I met Spoon, I, I found my, in my diary, the first letter that I got from him was in 19, early 1999, um, which was about six months after I had met um, his big sister and mentor uh, and friend and mine, uh, Judith Tannenbaum. So, so it's been it's been quite a while, um, and I'm turning 53 this 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 fall, and which means I'll have known Spoon almost half my life, um, and. Uh, Boone is an incredible poet and activist and um, producer and I think a filmmaker and so many, many other things. He is also uh, on the uh, advisory board for Jack and has been, I think, for at least two years. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Wendy. Um, during, the, during his talk, I will plug um, different projects, past and present and future and uh, in the chat box, but um, I would like to turn things over to Mr. Jackson. Take it away, Spoon. All right, thank you very much. Uh, it's honored. No beauty in stealth bars. Restless, unable to sleep. Keys, bars, guns being racked. Year after year, endless echoes of steel kissing steel. Boys constant yelling, nothing said. Vegetating faces, lost faces, dusted faces. A lifer, a dreamer, tomorrow's a dream. Yesterday's a memory, both the passing of a cloud. How I long for the silence of a raindrop falling gently to earth. The magnificence of a rose blooming into its many hues. Color. The brilliance of a rainbow when it sweetly lights up the sky. The pounding rainfall, picnics in a rich green meadow. We saw the beauty in butterflies that made them our symbol. Tiny grains of sand on hourglass and tear that may engender a waterfall. The memories, the dreams are now. Love is now. There's no beauty in cell bars. Welcome to uh, my writing class of uh, writing recklessly. It's dedicated to Judith Tidenbaum, my beloved mentor and big sister who passed on now way over a year ago that she is still with me with this presentation. And I want to thank the Justice Coalition, and I want to let you know that Judith will carry on in this in a book called The Book of Judith that we are creating, and Wendy Jason is in it, Katie Adams is in it, and Bill Cleveland is in it, among other people that knew Judith. And we already have a publisher and everything, so be looking forward to the trailer and everything. And when I... No, Judith, she uh, would let me sit in her class and not even speak because at the time I was uh, doing a silence thing. I was at San Quentin and uh, she didn't get nervous with a guy that came into the class to put chairs around him to keep, you know, people at bay. And I had on my dark shades and my boots and everything. And so she let me sit in her class and I ended up for over a year. She did an individual consultation, and I found out that uh, I could write a little. So she taught me how to open myself up. And this is uh, one of the things that I've learned. Shortly after I came to prison, I realized that I was on some kind of journey, though I had no idea where it would lead. I knew that silence and knowledge was my teachers and I decided to become a student in life. I checked out books from the prison library and education department, went to the cell on Friday afternoons and read and studied until Monday mornings. I feasted on knowledge and wisdom. I had to know and grow in all areas I could grasp and to ponder at every moment. I dived into philosophy, religion, psychology, sociology, ecology, and ideology I could get my mind into. 
I pondered and debunked and peeled off layers of false history and propaganda that had clogged my heart and soul. Those misguided histories I had been force fed like a motherless lamb. On a whim, I signed up for two poetry classes. I never read or pondered any poetry before. Nor did I think I would like it. I had mistakenly thought that poetry was beyond me and only for women, squares, nerds, weirdos, professors, and highbrows. People caught up in some unreal academic world. Being incarcerated, I looked upon poetry as a weakness, as well as the expression of any feelings. I thought nothing real could come of it. I would come to see that it took more heart to be a poet in prison than being a gangster. When writing from a real place, even the appearance of poetry itself became a strength and really a power that opened doors. Now I know that not only do other prisons respect poetry, many long to, peel, to be poets and to read and write poetry themselves. So one day, uh, one time, Judith would uh, ask me questions, you know, and she was telling me one day that uh, she felt uh, stopped or that she was at some impasse. And I know she she had some kind of structure that was her own, but then I would tell I told her that she needed to write recklessly, and I I can't remember exactly what I said, but it it really meant something to her, and she started to open up. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Thank you, computer lady. And she started to open up and uh, find a new avenue to get herself out there and work. And at the same time, she would advise me on something called parallelism. And it was sort of like an equation. How What you do with this sentence or phrase on this side of the conjunction, you had to do on the other side or whatever it was that you was creating a line or a refrain. And that was what Judith would do. She and I would, you know, have questions about things that we didn't know much about because I come from a little small town and the heart of the high desert, and she came from the city. So the lesson that I would want you all to do right now is to, uh, what would it that be if you have, if you were a color? It could be any color, and it don't have to be a race thing I'm talking about. It could be anything. But I think poetry uh, and creative writing can encompass anything. It could be, uh, if you could choose uh, to live inside any dream, what would that look like and be like? So that is the lesson I would like you to ponder as uh, this class goes on. Judith and I did this uh, book called uh, By Heart. And uh, when the, in the development of the book, uh, Judith uh, got a residency in Oregon. And she went to this uh, this workshop. And she didn't know it, but Gloria Steinem was at the workshop. And so uh, the first night of the workshop, she read the first chapter out of her book By Heart. And all the, it was uh, all, all women there. And, uh, she was, uh, Gloria Steinemann was very impressed. And then the next night she read the second chapter because the book by heart is written in two different, uh, she write a chapter and I wrote a chapter. And uh, this is a part of what uh, Judith read to uh, that group. And I'll give you a little bit of uh, Gloria Steinem's reaction. Indian summer at San Quentin sweet sun brings back the times I ran the dry river with the greyhound dogs and laid under a heavy black railroad bridge as the trains rumbled across shaking the soft sands in those times I watched the shadows of the rail cars dart by and when night fell on a hot day play kick the can in pure desert darkness there were no street lights on Cook Street when I was a boy my skin feels warm and alive this San Quentin September, as though I am a lizard sunning on a big rock. Instead, I wear prison blues, shirts, pants, and coats, plus brown high-top boots and dark shades, coat and shades I put on whenever I'm outside the cell. I sit in my spot on the winding metal stairs of San Quentin Education Building and see Judith bouncing down the steps from Arts and Corrections Office. I notice her healthy, pale skin, small feet, slightly curly brown hair, long flowered skirt, a pair of tire track sandals. 
Yes, I know that you is a woman and at the same time a human being struggling with life, death, truth, and imagination just like just as I am. She's already shown me new doors to step into, even in my silence. So I am able to absorb and appreciate that, that Judy is a woman in an all-male prison, but also the leader and teacher of the poetry class. This warm September afternoon, Judy is not as much a stranger to me. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. For she has had to put herself out there to be credible. I know I have watched and listened to her share her truth, views, life, wisdom, and poetry. I know her through the books she suggested, the poetry she read aloud, and the way she related to others in the poetry class. I have been through many summers in prison by this particular September. I arrived in 1977 from a small desert town and have walked in dark shades and silence most of that time since then. None of the other prisoners, guards, or free staff had a clue to what I am about or what I am capable of doing. They have only they have had my prison file, a few pages gathered hastily together by the court or probation officer, a couple of detectives and a psychologist who after one or two ten minute sessions purported to access, reveal, depict, and predict entire life in one brush stroke. And the file there was nothing about how my mom made me Arkansas meatloaf instead of cake for my birthday, a date we celebrated on August the 21st instead of August the 22nd. For the first 10 years of my life, nothing in the file about how I spent time under Black's Bridge and how I ran the dry river with semi-wild dogs. The guards and other prisoners and prison staff could not place me anywhere, not in any street or prison gang. They did not know that I had learned to despise violence and to love peace. That I look forward to lockdown with all the silence, reading, and studying given by those long stretches of time confined to my cell. When the cell doors close, doors to other worlds and places open up. Prison people did not know that inside me was a desert thirst for knowledge, to know and explore new things. Pre prison, my life had never been one of words. I could barely read, and I spoke as my father did to me in one word sentences, and shrugs, or by nodding my head. But during the months I was on trial, I sat stunned by all the words the DA used. I had no idea what those words meant, and I told myself then I would not let unknown words trap me. I started to study the dictionary in the county jail and reading all I could. I began to awaken the sleeping student inside me and took my first steps on my journey. So probably got a couple of minutes before the computer lady comes back and uh, tells me that there's another 15. You have 60 seconds remaining. There she is. <laughs> and uh, so when we come back, I'll do a little uh, Q&A, well, not a Q&A, but uh, I guess a poetry reading is next. Yes, I'll read some poems when we come back. Awesome. Hopefully, computer lady will enjoy them, too, I hope. She needs <laughs> some uh, to think about. And I got a poem called Computer Lady that I will share with y'all too later on. OK. You're going to call right back. Yes. Meantime, people write something. I'd appreciate it. It's hard to do this with no, I can't see my audience, so it's really hard. So I'm trying to gather up something to keep going. Hey, Spoon, it's Lori Brooks. Just wanted to say hi. It's wonderful to hear your voice. He'll call right back. Maybe when he, um... About 60 seconds, he'll call right back. Um, when he comes back on the line, maybe we could go around. And uh, for folks that know him or just want to do a shout out, that would be really helpful. I think um, for the folks that have called in during the convening from prison, it's just I've been overwhelmed with the um, you know, just the reality, right? This is here. This is it, right? How many how many people are standing in line behind him right now, waiting to to monopolize the phone for the entire afternoon or morning? Um, so, also, if you know, you don't have to. I mean, even if you don't know Spoon personally, you can certainly uh, do a shout out or um, or drop um, 
a question in the box. So I also, while we're waiting, um, he's fast. It'll be any second now. We timed okay. this yesterday. Thank you, Katie, for doing this. It's really wonderful. Really, really, really awesome. Oh, yeah. It's he should be here. Yeah. Live. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just amazing to have this connection such as it is. It's really great. He just called back. Jackson. An inmate at a California state prison, Solano, Vacaville, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial five now. Thank you for using Global Tell Link. Hey, Spoon. And, uh, hello, Dan. Hey, yeah. Spoon. Um, a few people want to say hello just very quickly because you can't see them. Um, I mean, they can see you yeah. when I stop my video because I've got your, you know your big yeah. your big beautiful yeah. face plastered yeah. on the screen. But um, can a few people say hi to you? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I need energy. Go for yeah. it. Um, if anybody wants to say hey, go ahead and unmute yourself and do a quick shout out. Hey, Spoon. Go ahead. Hey, Spoon. Hey, Spoon, it's Wayne Cook. I should Wayne Cook. It's Wayne Cook. I should see you probably in a couple of weeks, maybe. Hey, that'd be nice. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Glad to hear your voice. All We're right. coming back in. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you in about three weeks. Okay, great, great. We need it. We need it here. This covert almost took me out. Yeah. 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 Spoon, Bill, Bill Cleveland here. Bill Cleveland, really love hearing your voice, man. It's like a, it's like an elixir. Yeah. Hey, Spoon. I, I just saw a documentary about the work that you did on waiting on for Godot, uh, and it was just fantastic. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Boone, my name is Willow, and I heard you say COVID almost took you out. So, so glad it didn't keep on going, man. Stay strong. Yeah, I shall. Yeah. You got 30 people here. My death was greatly exaggerated, so thank you. Hey, Spoon, it's Lori Brooks from the William James Prison Arts Project, and I just... Uh... Hey, all right. Hey, How you hey. Doing? good, good. You're our poet laureate. I don't know if you know that, but we're gonna we're gonna make you poet laureate of California. Oh, I want that. I'm, I'm open to. How do we do that? I don't know, but we gotta do that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Thank you. Luis would say you're, yes. You're awesome. Day. It's so good to hear your voice. Thank you. Thank and you. your poetry, your beautiful tribute to Judith. It's just so. So touching. I just thank you. Yeah. Oh. Spoon. And here's the, uh, you just reminded me too of something too. Yeah. No, go ahead, Spoon. What what did Lori remind you of? Uh I got I gotta, I gotta uh, read the poem that we is in that's gonna be in the book of Judas that we are creating. You know, we, you, like I said, we got a publisher and everything, and then everybody loves what's going down right now. The board where the book is going to be published, and this is a poem that uh, I wrote after reading the poetry that people were sending in to be in the book, and it's called Fire. Mm. Judith was like a fire on a chilly morning where we gathered around and gained warmth and insight. She ignited our fire at our core that often we did not know we had fire in us that she then gathered around and gained warmth and insight. She knew there was something special undiscovered about each of us, especially those ones she allowed to be closest to her. We all grew like a stand of sequoias sharing space. So this is, I guess I might as well. Continue to read. Spoon, this is Wendy. Can I jump in for a sec? Hey, Spoon. Yes. Wendy wants to jump in real quick and say something. Okay. Hey, Wendy. Hey, friend. I don't like, I, I am without words right now, Spoon. I'm just so grateful to have you here. 
um, and so grateful to have had you in my life for 10 years or whatever it's been, um, and that you, yeah. more than anyone, um, understands the impact that Judith had on so many of our lives and that you're breathing her and carrying her and the heart beating her through everything that you do every moment and into this space right now. Um, we out here, like I am doing what I can to make sure that she's with us in Jack every step of the way and that you are. Um, and I'm just like, I, I didn't spoon, like I did not expect that the um, effect your voice would have on me this morning, but like, Thank you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with me for these years and like just standing so yeah. strong. Remember to, um, yeah, let your peace be in the book of Judith. Judith wanted you. Wanted I'm trying, Spoon. I can't write that thing, but I'm trying. It's hard. <laughs> let it, let your peace be in there because we need your work in there too mm -hmm. with us in the book of Judith. It's going to be amazing. I will. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this poem. Here, I got to go a little hard on this one. It's called SAG. How can I, how do I hold my temper, keeping my grace and not become bitter, stuck in this infamous place? I remember even at seven, I dreamed of a better race, a better place than a human race. Better, better. I dreamed of a better place and a better race than a human race. Stuck in this infamous place without a trace, only a history of misery and indentured slavery. I pledge no allegiance to this flag and free I let my parents say. I am the little black boy's soul taken from his mother's bosom and sold while the old ones still linked to Africa, killed the white ones with their head down and eyes closed. Stuck in this infamous place without a trace, only a history of misery and indentured slavery. I pledge no allegiance to this flag and free I let my parents say. I am John Lennon who spoke of one race. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I am Mother Teresa who came to death row unafraid of any gunner. I am Martin Luther King Jr. shot down on the balcony in the midst of his dream. I am Malcolm X betrayed by the beastly and burnt surreptitiously stuck in this infamous place without a trace. There's only a history of misery and indentured slavery. I pledge no allegiance to this flag and free I let my parents say. I am the one not mentioned in your constitution as human not allowed to vote until it made no difference. Job was just a 2003 year old metaphor. The true warrior was a slave and John Brown, the true hero of the brave. I am Emmett Till hung from an old, beautiful Southern willow tree, stuck in this infamous place without a trace, only a history of misery and indentured slavery. I pledge no allegiance to this flag and free. I let my parents say. Wow. And this next one is called No Moon. I was afraid this would happen, the way the night looks with no moon, the way the wind whistles off the back porch. You want to love me. How can I tell you I have a life, but I don't have a life? What can I tell you? Should I tell you about the bars that don't speak or the razor wire that longs to sever the throat? Or the cold winds that bounce off the emptiness. Should I tell you about the trees 200 yards away across the river of electric wire? How the trees haunt me like the smell of barbecue, like the scent of mountain meadows, like the sight of crimson painted toes. Across the river, across the hills, there is wine that belongs to no one. What can I tell you? Should I tell you about all the lovely women I never had? Should I tell you about the moon fading away like a piece of hard, round candy? I was afraid this would happen, the way the night feels with no moon, the way the wind whistles off the back porch, pushing on the screen door like 10 cats, like 10 mad men fighting. And this one here is, uh, it's named, uh, well, I got, there was a film we did uh, at Night I Fly that was done, Arts and Correction, Jim Carlson, everybody was involved, and it won the Swedish Oscars. It was done by a Swedish filmmaker and friend and brother, Michelle and uh, Alvin. 
this poem is called At Night I Fly and is inspired by uh, Lucio Clifton and Pablo Neruda. I go where the wind hides when it is not blowing. I watch the clouds gobble up the moon. I see my thoughts. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. My love crash like seas on ships. I stand on top of swords and spears. I walk up endless staircases and mountains on the tips of giant nails, drinking spirits out of huge goblins. My heart pounds against no chest. I know not what to tell it, crowded in solitudes, too many souls alone to be one body. The moons of defaced minted silver dollar. It sleeps alone in its own universe, no longer a star. Today I died, I died yesterday, and tomorrow, and at night, I fly. I love that poem, it's beautiful. And the segment is about over, I think so. We have about four minutes before they cut us off, okay, so before Computer Lady comes back. Yeah, I think I'm gonna read the Computer Lady right now. I can find it right quick. Because, you know, then I could get into the covert poems I wrote. It's computer lady. Computer lady. Computer woman wants to be treated like a lady, but her voice is so cold, rude, and shady. She will cut you off in the middle of grieving, in the middle of loving, in the middle of leaving. GTL, your computer daddy can go straight to hell, unfeeling and uncaring. No human in your voice, 60 seconds is your choice. Computer woman wants to be treated like a lady, but her voice is so cold, rude, and shady. Invading conversations like weeds to a flower party. You have no real concept of time, how flexible it can be. Just a figment of the imagination that cannot be bought or sold. Nothing more important to the computer lady than to tell you, you have 60 seconds to love. Computer lady and your daddy, GTL, can go straight to hell. Invading conversations like weeds to a flower party. So get ready because the computer lady is quite rude, distant, and shady. And your daddy, GTL, can go straight to hell. Okay. Wow, someone's got to say a response to that. That was so creative. <laughs> Woo! Um, hi, my name is Mary Cohen, based in Iowa. Thank you for your energy and love and ability to be here today. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. And your humor. <laughs> right. People are clapping in the text chat. Yeah. Yeah, I start. Uh, after the little phone break, I do the covert poem. Okay. Yeah, about the uh, catch and go poem that I wrote. Then uh, I guess we could have, after that, I think it's the Q&A to come up. I don't know. If um... so always, uh, we get ready to start a new uh, podcast because the radio station KLW decided that well, like Ear Hustle, we had to, well, some of us had to go. So we trying to start our own uh, radio podcast and it'd be out in the fall, but we're going to put trailers out. And uh, we got the, the support of, you know, Solano. And uh, we're going to make keep it real and keep it real stories coming from real producers. So we're going to create something. It touches hearts and souls, we hope. Because I miss doing radio and it was fun. I hope everybody listened to my some of my pieces before. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but it seems like I'm just coming up with more ways to express myself and I love that. I just yeah. popped the uh the link to the the new um uncuffed project, the new podcast project, that, yeah. that Spoon's talking about in the chat box um when computer lady cuts us off again and and probably oh about 40 seconds um if you could put any questions that you might have in the chat i will uh i'm trying to keep track of them so um or you can just wait and unmute yourself after the last uh the last poem so 
before the computer lady comes on? Yeah, can 60 I seconds remaining. Oh. <laughs> of course, I think, I think you're talking about yeah. a different radio program, though. But keep, keep William James informed, okay? Because if we can support you in, in your whatever you're doing, we want to want to amplify okay, your voice. Yeah, we are. We'll get you and Matt together. Okay, thank you. We are. Oh, is it Matt? Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll put you down as one of the organizations that support us. We're doing a nonprofit. We help in returning citizens and. We're going to expand it and, you know, already do a readings and presentations to colleges and to students, mainly over in Sweden, where they love me. I don't know America. Sweden loves me. We love you and in Sweden. I, I be, yeah, so I'd be doing those and I get a kick out of doing that. And it's like I said, it's a nonprofit and everything's legit. We, we're coming from realness and from love and from wanting to, even if, you know, we have a hell of a time getting out of prison, but even if we don't get out, we just want to be able to help people stay out and not get involved in this madness, this monster called us. So while we're waiting on Spoon to call back, he'll read one more poem. Um, uh, I, I, I will share um, some news. I was looking, I popped the links back in the chat for folks that came late. Um, so the New Village uh, Press, which published by heart, um, they have a college distributor now, which is woohoo. <laughs> I've been waiting a long, I've been waiting a while for that. Um, and NY, so you can get it now through NYU Press. So I already know I've been in touch with Lynn and I'm gonna, you know, make half my classes buy it uh, in the fall at least. And um, so they can do that now. So I know that there was some, there were some barriers. Um, let me, I put the, 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 top link spoonjackson.org most of you who've, who know his work um here he comes know the realness network and he had he's changed his website completely and sarah weck hang on sarah weck who's recreated his website has done a really really spectacular job telephone number will be monitored and recorded to accept this call say or dial five now Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Are you hey, there? Hey. Uh, in, uh, this, uh, I wrote a Covert 19 love poem before I called Covert 19. And I think Covert 19 got pissed at me a little bit. And decided to realize. <laughs> I think so too. Let's yeah. show this guy something. So this is what I wrote uh, before uh, Covert hit me. And it's a love poem. Type of, love, type of love song. Baby, I know 19 ways to love you, 19 ways to touch you, but none to stay away from you for a month, a week, or a day. Covert 19 of no. Baby, I cannot imagine keeping social distance from you when the moon reflects your light. I know 19 ways to love you, 19 ways to touch you, but none to stay away from you. I cannot stand it to look at you from a distance and create some resistance. I cannot stand it, you being there when my eyes taste you, yet you are a distant star. I know 19 ways to love you, 19 ways to touch you, but none to stay away from you for a month, a week, or a day. Covert 19, a no. Covert 19 has never been my dream, and I cannot pull back the shade, the sweet water's beam off your body. Can a fish live without water? Can a sea live without kissing the shore? Can anyone social distance from food, drink, or breath? Covert 19 may dispatch our lives like Romeo and Juliet, and the thought of not holding you for a moment or a thousand years could kill me. Because, baby, I know 19 ways to love you, 19 ways to touch you, but none to stay away from you. But then Covert said, I had a, something to teach you. So this poem came after I got out of the hospital and went through uh, getting that chicken soup. And that's what kept me going was that chicken soup they had at the hospital. It was, man, it was damn good. I never had that food here. You know, ain't too good in prison. But that chicken soup in the hospital was good. And this poem is called Touch and Go. I've only been from my mom's house to the big house. And I want to cut more audio and do more radio and see the New Orleans tree. I want to see the railroad tracks in Arkansas that Maya Angelou still would not cross. 
It was touch and go, ivied out, needled out, like being stunned over and over again by healer bees. I dreamed about each of my brothers that had passed on. I saw angels and shadows and other cool beings, the colors of rainbows. It was touch and go. I've only been from my mom's house to the big house. I want to see other worlds and eat more good food. The illness kept the body still, shackled to the bed like a dog, but still cold. The illness kept my heart climbing up a hill. I told my brothers I was not yet ready to cross over, although it seemed like a delightful place. But I came only to visit. Please don't make a nest for me yet. I've only been from my mom's house to the big house, and my loved ones surrounded me like heavy clouds protecting the heart of my soul. My loved one to circle me like magic as I fly above and sway with the sea. The nights of illness, the nights of stillness, the moon and the sun heal me. The albatross, the night of realness. Everybody's clicking. Everybody's clicking their fingers and applauding. We can't see them or hear them, but they are. Yeah, so we could... Uh, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. We could do the Q&A, and I, I would like to thank Wendy and all the interns and Paige and Gonzalez and Katie Owens, Murphy, and all the interns again. It's an honor, and I'm proud of all of you, and I'm proud of Wendy, and Wendy be in the book of Judas, and I want to thank Tori. Wherever you are, miss you, love you. And uh, everyone yeah. at the Justice Arts Coalition, I want to thank. And I'm glad, I hope we'll be able to do more conferences and more things. And, and our Uncuffed Project want to be a part of whatever it is we all are creating where we try to change justice and make it more equitable, where we try to do away with prisons if we can and find better ways to heal people and to treat mental illness and to treat uh, being human because there's, there's a human landscape I think where we all could meet even uh, you know with guards and, 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 and prisoners and to meet and find ways to treat each other humanly so right now you know we are I'm open to whatever questions anybody want to ask. I am going to print out the um, read read off the chat um, comments to you later, Spoon. But if anybody has any questions, it would be wonderful to hear your voices. Or if you just want to say hey yeah. or thank you. Uh uh, if nobody else pops in, I'll go first. My name's Mary. I said, wow, after the computer lady poem, Spoon. And I wrote, Spoon, thank you for your heart and, heart and your art. A lot of this conversation in our coalition convening has been about abolition. So I wonder if you could speak about currently, what is your understanding of abolition? Uh, my understanding is that the, the abolition is to do away with uh, prisons. And uh, I think when you build uh, something from uh, racism and sexism and deprivation that it has been rooted like the roots of a tree, you got to take it out and find something different, something new. So I think that the abolition is per perfectly fine because if you get a wound and you keep poking at it and don't let it heal, it can't fix itself. Thank you. Thank you. Lori Brooks has something. If I may, in the interest of realness, if would we have had a Spoon Jackson if there weren't prisons? What was what? Would we have Spoon Jackson if there weren't prisons? I mean, I just because you were like you're talking about you you said something about light loving the um the lockdowns when you have the solitude and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, that, was, that was before poetry. Yeah, that's before I found out I was an artist. I didn't know I was one. I just was in love with knowledge then. And I was so excited about reading 
that would have was going on then. I was reading philosophies, religions and stuff, and it was just blowing me away because I didn't read any of that stuff on the streets and I didn't know that I could feel that way. So I was perfectly happy with silence and perfectly happy not talking to anybody and walking around with my shades and stuff on and feeling good inside and and but then you know, once you get to get knowledge and stuff like that, one some knowledge send you to other places and I ended up starting to read poetry and I ended up saying, Hell, let me sign up for this and that and like I said, that's how I got into Judas class. And then that just, you know, Judas let me sit there and absorb in her class, you know, like a plant and absorb what I needed in silence. And then when she gave me that individual consultation and we came up with a, the poem, The Heart of Kai Desert, what happened was it was something like a guided tour is what I call it. Because we started talking, me and Judith, and she said, where are you from? And I said, yeah, I'm from the desert, you know, the heart of the high desert down in Barstow. And then she, he's walking down the stairs, next thing I know, we down, sit down at the class, and she wrote all that stuff down. I said, what the hell is this? And she said, this is, all your words, you're speaking in poems. And the, and the heart of the hard desert came out like this. Stretched out here on this spot, my mind drifts and dreams within itself, searching for a poem. Ocean winds, gentle breezes find their way through the bars. Through the bars, a sparrow sings. And its mellow floor, its melody is all about love. Nine degrees hotter, I'd be warm. A wildflower takes its first breath of air after generous rainfall. I grew up in the Mojave in a small town, the heart of the high desert, the only place I'd been till they brought me here. I stood on Cook Street and looked at the mountains that surrounded me. They appeared to be the whole world. How naive was I? I was 20 when I got busted that same day I signed up with the Marines. I wanted to see the world. They kept me in the cell, in the corner, off to myself. The city jails across from the high school. And I couldn't see, but I heard the sounds of those games, those football games I'd gone through my whole life in that town. My nephew wrote me a letter. First time in 10 years I've been here, he wrote, he remembers I taught him to drive, to whistle. He remembers us washing my car. He wrote, dear Uncle Stanley, stinging memories that had been lost, sadness of the heart, frowns of the face, every wrinkle on my face is but a harbinger of joy fighting to overtake the sadness of the heart. And Judy basically had me say all that verbally and wrote it down. So, yeah. Incredible. Incredible. I had no intentions of being a poet or being an artist, none of that. I'm shocked, like, uh, still shocked about what I've been doing. And, you know, so, yeah. I'm so grateful for your work. It's just beautiful. It's real. It's deep. You, you, you didn't get to see the world, but you're you're going deep and really opening up the world within yourself. It's just gorgeous. I don't know what to say. Hi, Spoon. Um, oh, sorry, Wendy, are you? Spoon, this is Robin. I volunteer with Katie and Wendy and everyone at Jack. Um, I'm so grateful to have been able to finally talk to you after just hearing about you. Um, but I'm hoping you can help me out. I'm actually right now teaching um, writing um, via distance learning. And I'm normally a visual arts teacher. And so a lot of our students have never tried writing before. Um, kind of like how you were saying that, you know, you didn't think you were a poet. And I, like, what would you tell someone to get them to get over the fear and just start writing? Uh, I would try that silent writing thing just to write just whatever comes to mind and just let it go. Or I would do the guided tour, ask them some questions about their lives, and, and they might speak the poem like I did. And then they'd be shocked at what came out. Yeah. So, because I didn't, it wasn't so much as, as what, it's what Judith did with what I was speaking that showed me that I could be a poet, you know, that I was an artist, you know? So maybe if, if, if they being heard and something is written down or from what they have said, that might help them see that, you know, how poetry or how writing in general can just enlighten it. I think they don't just don't know. They just don't know. A lot of times they, if you just take interest, you know, real interest in uh, helping somebody with something, it 
especially in the Brady field, I think that enlightens, I think. Thank you. And thanks for being here. We have about two yeah, minutes. Thank you. Okay. Well, so, I'm, uh, you want to read um, Henry's comment that's in the chat or maybe do you want me to? Could you? Sure. Hey, Spoon, it's Wendy. I'm just going to read a comment in the chat from Henry that says, thank you, Spoon. Powerful, insightful, spiritual, and empowering. All of your readings touched me, but Computer Lady resonated the most, resonated in me the most. I'm a returned resident and remember making those calls and you really captured the spirit or lack thereof of the recording and CDCR in general. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Jim. I'll close with uh, Beauty and Cell Bar. Thanks, Spoon. Yep, you're welcome. Beauty and Cell Bar. We lock ourselves up, not because of the bars and steel that surrounds us, not because life doesn't bend. This call and or telephone number will be monitored and recorded. But because of the projections we place onto our world, the judgments, the eye can'ts, the trying to please everyone while not pleasing ourselves, by seeking the beauty on the outside that is surely within, for prisons are created internally and are found everywhere. We allow unnatural and unreal thoughts to be our walls, our limits, because of the dam we build to stop the universal love, the light. It's all within ourselves, this paradise you go to of beauty and love. There's peace where along with the ego. You have 60 seconds remaining. A place inside that was inspired from the inner and above, which are one and the same. The world may not bend to your every whim, but it will flow wherever you want it to go, where it's supposed to go. There's beauty and cell bar. And thank you, there's beauty and Jack and realness. Y'all keep up the good work. Spoon Jackson out. Thank you all there. Everyone want to say th say goodbye? Thank you, Spoon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Spoon. Thank you, Spoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Spoon. Much love to you. Love you, too. Love you. Stay strong. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't kiss at COVID. Be real. Call me later if you can. Bye. I, I love you. Take Bye. care. Love you. Thank you, Katie, for making that happen. Thank you all so much for, thank you for that so much. Um, if you have any questions um, or any comments that you want to pop in the chat, I'm just going to leave, I'm going to stay on the line for, you know, two, three more minutes. Um, and then I'll save the chat and I will read everything that's in there to him later because um, he will call. Um, probably right after the third plenary starts, <laughs> my phone will ring again and I'll read, I'll sit, and I'm just going to sit and read it to him. So, um, so if you don't want something read, if you don't want your comments read, then, you know, you can certainly tell me that too, but, uh, thank you all so much. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. There, there are Thank some you. beautiful things posted in the chat. Is there a way that we can get copies of the chat? You want to answer that, Wendy? I'm not sure. Yeah, you can save the chat in the far, yeah. far, far, far right left corner. There's three dots. Save chat. Three oh yeah, dots. everyone three dots can say it. more. Yeah, you, yep. oh, that's right. You can save it on your own. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then put show in folder, and then you have it. Yep. Um, and also, I'll just chime in and say we will have um, transcriptions of all of the sessions in the weeks following the convening. Um, so we will let everyone know when those are ready if people want access to those. Um, and we're going to try to do those in Spanish as well as in English. Yeah. Does that include the open space ones too? Mm, no, I don't think so. No, because we weren't recording those. Okay. Although it, uh, there's a possibility that a couple of the sessions today we're gonna are gonna be recorded. I'm gonna try to record um, Moyo's the session with Moyo this afternoon at three thirty. Moyo is um, an artist on death row, um, and his friend Lawrence is going to be hosting a session in open space at three thirty, um, sharing some of his visual art and um, some recordings of conversations with him and videos as well. I believe Moyo's amazing, <laughs> amazing. Um, what time are we ending, Katie?
in about 60 seconds. Okay. Um, I'm gonna paste his address. So if anybody would like to correspond with Spoon, um, copy and paste. Many of y'all are, are, teach, are professors, teachers. Spoon is incredible working with students. Um, I was teaching at Georgetown here in DC many years ago and, and Spoon was in correspondence with the students in my class and it was incredibly, incredibly powerful for them. Yeah. Um, I also just want to like speak into the space that I, I think it's safe to say that Jack would not be here. We would not be here right now if it was not for Spoon and not for Judith. Um, it was Judith who brought me into this work. It was reading by heart um, that was written by Spoon and Judith that really, I mean, I was already kind of, I had a toe in, I had, a, well, maybe I had a foot in, but that's what brought, wow. me, brought my full, full being into this. Um, Judith invited me to help manage the website, the Prison Arts Coalition website that she and some colleagues had started. And that is what has become Justice Arts Coalition. So um, when Spoon thanks us or anyone thanks me for this, it's not, it's Spoon and it's Judith. And that is, mm -hmm. they are why we're here. Um, so it's really, really important for me to name that. And like, this has been an hour of me, like really, really feeling that for the first time in a long time. So. I appreciate y'all for just being so present um, and really showing up here today. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for saying that, Wendy. Yeah. This is just extraordinary. And Wonderful. Beautiful to hold this space with everybody. And it's been amazing. Thank you, Wendy, for all you've done all these years, keeping, keeping that thread going. It's just beautiful what Jack has become. This conference is gorgeous. Just really, I just might take my hat off to you. Thanks, Lori. It really belongs to all of us. And and, um, and it's all of, you know, I, I feel like it's our shared responsibility to continue to do this work in a way that honors Judith's legacy and honors Spoon and honors everyone inside that we work with every day. Um, so thank you. Doing that fabulously. Yep. Fabulous. Awesome. Yeah, and you're yeah, holding in a beautiful way. So, w Wendy, something that's really rising up for me, this is Bill. Um, I think um, computer conferences suck, but this one has transcended the, the, yeah. the you know, and, and, and it has to do with the power and the authenticity and the heart. Uh, that is in each one of these stupid squares. Uh, there's a human there, you know, who is feeling an, so much that you can actually feel it across this, uh, mm -hmm. these dumb wires and bits and bytes and all that stuff. So, um, you know, thank you for transcending the tyranny of, of the internet and all that. This is, this is the real deal. You know, you asked me last night what Judith would think about all this, and my answer was, she, excuse me, she would flip and hate Zoom. Um, I can't <laughs> tell you like how many phone calls, I just, you know, she's probably, anyway, I can't even tell you how many arguments we've had over just email, but anyway. Um, but, but at the end of the day, she would have sucked it up and she would have been here for every second of this because above and beyond everything else, Judith was about making connections and networks and lifting people up. And if Zoom is what it took, then Zoom is what it took, period, end of story. At the end of the day, she would sacrifice all of her discomfort and objections to make that happen. So, um, yeah, I mean, she would complain about it, you know, yes. <laughs> every step of the way. Yeah, I do. Like we all do. I've been hearing her all weekend. It's like, oh, it you know. might become a poem. Oh, that's true. Yes. Oh, it would be, definitely be a poem. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. But she would have done it, though. I mean, it was as painful as it would be. She would still be here. So, because that's what Judith is. And she was, she is about making connections, you know? So 20 years ago, today, wherever she is, she's still making people come together and connecting us in all kinds of incredible ways. So, yeah. And Spoon has, you know, yeah, he's amazing. Um, he's so amazing. Katie, I, I think um, you gotta... Go ahead. Oh, it's I all here. I a hand. 
Oh, that was me. Um, this is Karin. Sorry, I'm having computer issues for the last. Um, I have a quick question. So if we um, by any chance could um, get Spoon to write curriculum that would be included in um, like a, a distance learning packet or something like that, is there a way to compensate him for his work? Oh, yes. Okay. I'm going to pop my email address in the chat. I yeah. will write to you. Thank you, Katie. Just uh, reach out, and if I don't have the the answer on the you know on the on the spot, then I know how to find the answer. Thank you. The Two oh. Justice Arts Coalition can make that happen through court if, if you're thinking about correspondence. I'm thinking about correspondence. I was it was just yeah, a question, absolutely. and I I haven't spoken to you, but we, boom, yeah, just a boom. question that I would love to to do that if that's a possibility, but would like to. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you so much. And I just wanna echo everything. I've unfortunately been just popping in and out in presentation, but congratulations, Wendy. This is so wonderful. And um, to everyone, yeah. it's just heartfelt and I'm so inspired and in awe of everybody and grateful for everything that's here. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I've used a little more space. But anyway, just I think this conference has opened up. Um, Mariana Moscoso is the manager of the Arts and Corrections Program to the possibility of paying artists who are incarcerated to teach in the Arts and Corrections Program. I'm really going to press her on that because um, I think she yeah. something. I don't know. I think she's something happened in this conference, I think. And I'm going to pull that thread and see if it doesn't manifest. Yeah, and Laurie, the thing to uh, point out to her is that um, the California Arts Council pioneered um, paying a client as teacher. That's what they used to call it uh, back in the day when, uh, you know, it was sort Years of a revolutionary ago. agency. Yes, a long, long time ago. And Arts and Corrections, when it was a CDC program, uh, paid hundreds of artists uh, teaching inside, um, yeah. and to my mind, Minus that teacher. is, yep, and that that is the accountability piece that we struggle with, which is you put them in the driver's seat um, and help them define the curriculum and do their, you know, trust their stuff, man. Do their stuff for their for for their brothers and sisters that are around them and. The currency of that is, ex it's extraordinary. Uh, so, Lori, yes, let's go, let's go um, pedal to the metal on that one. This is Cameron, I'll echo that too. I've, I've seen that happen in the A yard in Lancaster prison where students take the material and then they create their own workshops, invite guest speakers, you know, develop uh, regular sessions, educational sessions, and it's been transformative, very life affirming. Yeah, I mean, the work is happening, but the compensation is not happening and the budget keeps shrinking, but hey. Right, right. So we wanna thank everybody for joining us. I think we're gonna go ahead and uh, close this session, but I believe we have a break and then there is a couple more uh, sessions throughout today. So I hope that you can join those sessions and be part of those discussions as well. Um, but really grateful to have everybody in this space um, and be part of this conversation. Thank you for joining us on this Saturday. Everyone. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. holding it down. Thanks so much. Thanks everyone.